Trading can give you information overload, so much information squeezed into a short space of time and the charts as well can seem confusing, but wouldn't it be nice if there was one chart type that took away all that noise and made your trading a load simpler? Well, there is, and it's called Renko, and it comes from Japan. It's one of my most favorite chart types and one of my most successful. Uh, one year made 300% return just using Renko alone. It takes away all the noise. It makes trading, I think, a lot more simpler. It's great for trend following, reversals, breakouts, has many applications useful in risk management and trade management. I think it is a wonderful chart tool to learn. If you don't use it on its own, you can use it in combination with other charts and it is also fantastic for automating and systematizing your trading and creating discipline and giving you a psychological edge. I've been using Renko charts professionally for decades and I now even teach the professional traders how to use Renko charts and I'm hoping I can take all that experience and knowledge down into this course and we've got a huge amount of content for you to get through and I think it's going to give you all you need to know about Renko and apply it into your trading. We're going to see how it fits into the world of technical analysis. We're going to see how you can enhance it and make it stronger, how to manipulate the blocks. They are the essence of the whole system and we are going to see how you can trade that and build strategies around that as well. So a huge amount to get through and I think it is a great course if you want to learn about Renko. So here's the finished product. Um, it involves numerous indicators that we've used to give us signals. I'm not going to tell you what they are, you'll have to find that out on the course, but here's our main protagonist, the Renko chart. Let's zoom in a bit and you can see the blocks in action. We got reds for down, blacks for up. Looks quite messy to start with, but actually it's a really logical and really simple approach to trading and it does take out a huge amount of trading noise. So if I show you this chart over the same time period, and this was a daily chart on gold, it, you will clearly see the difference. So here's two charts lined up. On the left we have Orenko, on the right we have our ordinary candlestick chart. And just notice how much cleaner the information looks on the Renko than it does the candlestick chart. Those up and down days where you don't know whether you should be in or out of a trade, that sort of indecision is taken away by the Renko chart. It makes you more disciplined and helps massively your trading psychology. And that to me is a great bonus for these charts. These charts work in any time frame. You know, a daily chart there, we could switch it to four hours, we could switch it to one hour, we could switch it down to 15 minutes. Choice is yours, which is really good for creating uh, trading strategies. In different time frames but also these charts are great for risk management and finding stop levels and exit points of potential trades so if we take it back to the daily chart we can see where for example down here we got a lot of support more clearly because the blocks just make it a lot more simplified around the you know the 1670 area on the price and we can also see upside it really struggled to get through like the 1740 area for a while that's the beauty of the approach that we're looking at on the Renko charts and why I think they're really valuable for your trading so who is this course for well it's for anybody who wants to learn a new technique in technical analysis and hopefully that will give you a trading edge and like I say build your own strategies 
trading plan around what you learn in this video. Now, what about experience? Do you need to know a lot about technical analysis? No, I'm gonna give you all you need to know in the video itself and all other learnings are on my channel and you can find a lot of content there available free for your perusal and education. So if you want to copy exactly what I'm doing here, I'm using trading view charts and all that really now is left for me to say is let's get into that course. This section is all about setting the scene for using Renko. We're going to look a bit of history, you know, how did we get here, the advances that have moved technical analysis on to allow us to use Renko, how we put it into your trading and comparing some of the different approaches. I was first introduced to Japanese charts while working for Samwa, a Japanese investment bank in the 1990s. Initially they looked mind-blowing, but as I got to understand them, I found them to be a really fantastic tool for my trading. Some of these unusual chart types date back to the very private world of 1600s Japan. The ones I specialise in and are most popular at the moment are Renko, Kagi, Linebreak, Heikinashi, Ichimoku are most popular really at the moment, Candlesticks. So what happened from 1600 Japan? The world grew smaller and over in the West and in, especially in the United States they were developing their own technical analysis systems you know used on trading floors such as the CBOT to trade grains and commodities and what happened? Well the globalization sped up and those two worlds East and West collided to create a different trading environment that we now are involved with. The globalization of the world's financial markets meant that there was a sharing of methods and techniques especially in technical analysis to gain that next edge and this has created an advantage to us today which we are going to try and apply through Renko. The changes we now see in technical analysis are all part of the wider global technological revolution and when I first started trading you had to draw the charts by hand and that was very painful but now, and you don't realise how lucky you are, you get access to world class usable technical analysis tools at a very affordable price allowing you to compete against anybody in the world's trading markets. Who can you thank for that? And people like Michael Bloomberg who put all that data analysis in one place so that we can have a trading edge. Furthermore, if you're thinking like a casino gamer, what does it mean for us? Well, it means that the chips are more equally stacked on our side. Trading and winning at trading is all about getting an edge. It doesn't mean know the edge of a cliff but what it means more is the casino gamer putting the edge the odds on your side and that's basically what the mathematical uh, description of the edge means it's the advantage that should result over time of the likelihood of you winning and how can you do this where well, you've got to beat the, the market at their own game and how are we going to do this where you've got various options that you can use as your tools or weapons of choice in trading at the moment and really it's about getting hold of the best tools and skill sets available and today it's either programming uh, like Python, uh, technical analysis or some inside uh, specialist knowledge that you have of a certain marketplace it's legal but for us it's going to be technical analysis because it's the easiest and quickest to learn and allows you to analyze like the pros so let's look at an example lean hogs and for those who don't know that's basically american pigs uh, it's a highly traded market over there and without technical analysis you'd never be able to spot these patterns unless you actually worked in that yeah, you know, the pig farming industry. Now those blue arrows 
for all the same time of the year, July, August, and the market just falls off heavily for some reason. And I'm going to ask you, you know, throw out there, why do you think that is? Well, it's a really obvious one. It's the barbecue season, and it's had ten winners in the last ten years here, and it's because of supply and demand trading human behavior unless you though were like it says they're a hog farmer with that inside knowledge you'd have missed that opportunity so technical analysis is a great tool for giving you that edge it's you know going to make and save you money um, it's going to save you lots of time you wouldn't have time to research those pigs like the, the insides would it's going to get you psychologically strong and create a lot of discipline in your trading and it's really really I think simple to understand and apply once you dig in put in a bit of effort it really is a powerful tool so it can also you know when you come to the practical side of trading aid it further by allowing you to forecast and target objectives you know allow for entry exit timing of trades risk reward the risk management is hugely important in trading and come up with your own design of strategies and allow you to test them and put them into production. It gives you that edge that we're looking for. That's what we want, the casino edge. So how can we turn our knowledge of technical analysis into hard cash? Well, we've got various ways, but we've got to understand the main principles. It boils down to three, determining when to trade a trend, controlling your risk and holding on to your money and the important one of money management and basically keeping in the game. It all sounds straightforward and obvious, but people don't do that. So we can even make our technical analysis stronger by applying it to other knowledge we have around fundamental and behavioral analysis. And is there a better way to trade? You know, Can fundamental analysis be stronger than technical analysis? Yes, it can, but there is no one right way. And what works for some doesn't for others. I've seen billionaire millionaire traders in both camps and what you're looking for is the edge it doesn't matter how you um, get there as long as you're making money and um, being a success so we don't really care and here we're going to look at technical analysis and Renko charts to do that in this section we're going to look at different chart types and compare them to one another to see why we should use them. There are many many types of technical analysis charts that cover all manners of trading and I specialize in Japanese charts with a sort of a western twist but in my world they're known as specialist charts they're the Renko Kagi nine break high count actually mainly because maybe they're not as popular as some of the others but they should be in my opinion. So how do they compare to each other for example well we could look at um, three of them which is the line break on the left the Kagi in the middle and the Renko on the right hand side and we can see that it's all the same data the same market and we can actually see from that how much more transparent it makes whether to go long or short say annual trading is and therefore makes the possibility of more disciplined approach to trading a lot more easy so that's why really I like these type of charts is the clarity that they actually give and let's have a look at Amazon for example against a standard candlestick chart same time period again on the left the candlestick on the right the Renko chart and to me, the one on the right, the Renko chart, just makes it really easy to see when to buy and sell. The greens are up blocks, the reds are down blocks. And it takes away, as you can see in the bubbles, you know, on the left there, the noise, the ups and downs every day. And it makes you stay in the trade, you know, in the trend a lot longer. And that increases your risk return on your trades and, at the end of the day, your profitability. So... It's a great tool anyway on its own, the candlestick charts, but I like to add on top of that Western type analysis to give it that extra boost, that extra edge in your trading. But when people normally do this in their charting, it ends up being a complete mess. And quite frankly, you know, there is no holy grail in trading. Um, 
it's a lot harder than that but adding all these indicators on top of indicators just makes you indecisive it makes you talk yourself out of a trade it messes with your brain so you can't actually perform as you should and at the end of the day you're going to lose money and that's not what we're here for so we need a process that simplifies things makes it a lot easier now you know this is just a typical example of what I've seen people using in charts. I'm not doesn't even matter what the market is, it's actually Amazon, but you know, how can you trade that? There's just indicators on indicators, and I could talk a story on any one of those whether to buy and sell. So we need something a lot cleaner, a lot more simple that we can be more decisive around in our trading. And that's where the Japanese charts come in uh, very strongly. But what you know what to use what what should you use there's so many well it comes down to personal preference trial and error markets you want to trade I, i've tried literally every chart type and actually settled on the japanese things because they suit my um mind frame and how i want to trade you know the time frames that you go into what you're trying to achieve from your trading you know how much money and returns you want to make but for me you know, like I said, I've used every chart and that Japanese type of chart system creates a very simple and effective starting point for my trading. They suit my mindset and what I'm trying to achieve. I'm also an algorithmic trader, so I can automate them very easily. But, you know, the tip here from my experience, you know, it's the obvious one. Keep it simple, Stephen. The KISS approach, you know, some of the best strategies and best ideas I've ever seen are built off the you know cleanest executed most simple strategies and that's what we're trying to learn from this um, part of technical analysis so the japanese style charts mainly in this sphere line break kagi and renko just make it clean simple and precise in our trading and what does that equal that equals easier more profitable more effective trading so in summary, you should now know a bit about the Renko charts, where they came from, a bit of history, compared to other types of charting system, and why we'd really want to use them in our trading. But uh, don't worry, um, you're not going to need to know anything deeper in regards to your knowledge of technical analysis. It's all going to be included in the course, those Western techniques I said that I added to my trading. We're going to cover off in detail how they work and how to apply them to the Renko world um, things like moving averages trend lines average true range historical volatility you know, briefly touch on stochastics directional movement indicator relative strength indicator bollinger bands awesome oscillators and how we're going to pull them all together into our charts and strategies to make an effective trading system Now we're going to get stuck into the Renko trading and introduce you to my samurai way of trading. It's very Japanese in its mindset and approach and I like to compare it to the samurai way. Um, it's disciplined, methodical, structured, systematic, simple and effective. Also I like to think of it as quite entrepreneurial because it's quite a new cutting edge um, sort of analysis over in the West especially and let's get stuck into it. Section 3 is really about where we get into the detail of the Renko charts, you know what are they, how they're constructed, how do you use them, the trading rules you should know and what problems you can expect when trading them. Let's firstly take a look at an example, and this is the GBP against the US dollar to see what Renko actually looks like. On the right we have the axis of the price and on the bottom we have time, we have red bricks showing down, black bricks showing up movement in price. Then if we zoom in out we can actually see that this simplifies the trend very nicely into a much more smooth process. And actually in this chart we can see the support and resistance lines more clearly and hopefully a clearer picture of where we can trade using the Renko chart system. 
So the human brain is going to be your worst enemy in trading. It's going to get in the way. It's just human nature. So we've got to try and remove that element to try it and succeed. You could do that through programming, but we don't always have those skills. And it's also very hard for humans to follow rules, however simple. We like to tinker, fiddle, mess around and very impatient. But the key to trading success is often consistently doing the same thing over and over again. Now, in the Royal Marines, they say it's 20% learning, 80% psychology. Same in trading, trading 80% psychology, 20% learned but it's going to take you 80% of your time to learn the 20% knowledge. And you've got to think like the casino owner, not the gambler, if you're going to win. They're the rich guys on the block. So how can we do this? Well, in this instance, we're going to do it using Renko charts. So how are Renko charts going to fix the psychological element of your trading? Well, they're going to help in many ways. They're going to give you the edge, a different angle. An approach to your trading that others don't have they're going to take away some emotion they're ripe for automation they're even more fantastic for strategy design and for me they're built for purpose they're going to create discipline and structure simplify the often complex world of financial markets give you a clearer picture of what's going on and in the long run help your decision making so we know that they came from Japan, but the important thing to know here is that originally these charts didn't involve time. It was really just about the movement of price and modern charts add on time and we'll get into that later. But essentially, and this is an important fact that you've got to remember that it's just about the movement of price is what is interesting us in Renko charts. And that's how we build our trading strategies. So a bit more detail about what Renko is actually, it's thought it was named from the original Japanese word Renga, meaning brick. Um, and these bricks represent a fixed price move. And they move up and down in 45 degree lines. And because of this sort of way of charting, it creates some great new strategies that we can use. So here we're looking at WTI crude oil. In this instance, I've got the red bricks as down and the black bricks as up price movement. And we can see from that a nice clear direction, the way the price of oil has moved, we can see where it stops and starts, support and resistance. And from that, as our basis point, we can then move into adding other elements to make it more effective strategy. So what can you use the Renko, Renko charts for in the world of trading? I think four main things, great for breakouts, great for trend following, reversals and risk and trade management. And remember the important concept that it's all about price action and its movement, not the time it does it in. So we need to dig in a bit further into our charts to see it and understand how they work. We're going to dig into some basic construction around the Renko chart and compare it to a more traditional popular candlestick chart to note the differences. And here we have an example of the GBP pound versus the US dollar. Now I've highlighted at the bottom of the screen the red bar which is one day period and we can see each one of those bars that I'm now scrolling up encapsulates one day's history of price movement and that's giving us a story of what happened in that fixed time period that we set. Now the western charts like the bar chart have that time fixed whereas Renko and Western charts with point and figure have the same thing of they really fundamentally don't involve time. It's to do with fixing and analysing the movement of price, not the time that it actually moved in. So here's Coco, uh, New York Coco, simple Renko chart. Modern charts have put time on the bottom essentially those bars own the blocks Renko blocks only move with the movement of price not the movement of time and that is really essential to understand 
So let's have a look at some of those blocks. In this example, the reds are up, the blacks are down. Notice that they move in a 45 degree line with one brick per vertical column, which is unusual in itself. And the color wise, you can actually set them to anything you like, as long as you remember whether they're up or down. There are some standard rules that you set, but you can play around to your heart's content on those um, colors. So three important takeaways we need to learn. The first one being that the specified movement of price is defined by the user. So bricks only move by what inputs you give it. That new blocks are created on this specified movement of price and that the brick size is determined by you and once it's determined it's always going to stay that size until you change it again. So some further uh, basics and construction thoughts. Um, brilliant chart for looking at support and resistance because it squares it off with the blocks you can easily see um, those levels same for signals it's easier to see changes in trends and traders selling an underlying asset when a br black brick is placed at the end of the series of red bricks it's as simple as that in terms of a trading signal and um, this this type of chart in japan was designed to follow trends very closely but they can if you get the tr uh, the block the block size wrong create many false signals another point to note unlike say a bar chart there are no gaps on the on a Renko chart. So let's have a look at another example. Here we've got WTI crude oil. By zooming in, we can see the smoothness of the trends once more. We can see the price and the way the charts have put time on there, but notice it's not symmetrical in the time approach. It jumps when the dates, when the thing moves. We can see easily, clearly support lines here around this in the instance of 40 early 40 dollars so that's important for our risk management and we can also on top of that draw trend lines similar to what you can do on bar charts and candlestick charts to also highlight support and resistance lines and and changes in the trend of any um, asset that you're possibly looking at here we can see a nice breakout from an uptrend and also you know it's a like the bar chart and the candlestick chart it is a subjective process but I think by using the fixed blocks it's more methodical so important um, information take away Trading just the brick colour on its own, going on red to black or black to red, very dangerous. Don't do it. You might get lucky, but you're going to get chopped in and out of trades. And the purpose of this course is to look how we're going to counter this um, in later sections. Let's get into some math behind the Renko chart construction. But don't worry, it is pretty simple stuff because all you actually need is the closing price of a time series. A format period or whatever you're studying or trading weekly daily hourly five minutes that's all you need we're going to talk about automating this later and what you'll need so we're not going to go into that now but to start with let's look at a hypothetical example now i've created a dummy series of prices for this crude oil asset over a couple of weeks ranging from 29 dollars to the close on the 11th there of june of 25 dollars and we're going to just step by step through what this actually means for chart construction so now we're going to use a one dollar fixed brick size here so we use the starting price of 29 dollars and the close at 31.50 so we're going to have three outcomes possible here up move down move or no move and the price moved up one dollar fifty and using a one dollar brick size that only means that it made one new up brick the, the fifty cents left afterwards wasn't enough to get to two dollars to make a secondary brick so if we're drawing that on the chart we only start with one brick now day two closed at thirty two dollars ninety seven but was it enough to create more up bricks yes it was actually now we have three 
black up bricks, $32, but $32.97 wasn't quite enough to get to $33 to create that fourth block. We had a big down move at the close of day three to $29.25. So how many bricks do we need to be drawn? Well, it didn't get down to 29 to create another down brick, but it was just enough to create one red down brick to $29. Let's complete the data set and on the 4th of June uh, one new down block was created and the price bounced up and down sideways but not enough to create any further blocks and then on the 11th the price collapses down to 25 creating a string of new down blocks. So in the previous example we used a arbitrary fixed block size of $1 and it's really important to know that you get the right brick size relative to the asset you're trading and it's one of the most important skills you're going to need to master if you're going to be good at Renko charts and it's so easy to get it wrong and there are three traditional ways of setting your block size the fixed value which we've seen the average true range and a percentage of price move now here's two examples on the left we've got a two dollar fixed approach and on the right we have a average true range divided by four approach on the same crude oil asset but giving us very different possible entries and exits and a different look to chart generally is the same but if you look into the minutia it is very different there's more bricks on the right version than the left one and that can either slow or speed down your trade entry or exit so we're left here with two thoughts that we've got to address firstly time how do we deal with that properly and secondly the brick size so before moving on to the optimal brick size we've got to address you know the, the, the issue of time and get that right before moving on let's try and understand the concept of time and as we said that they don't use time rank charts but that's not quite strictly true as you've probably seen we're always going to want a closing price a line in the sand that we can build our bricks from and the, the advantage now of charting is that they've added time to it to allow you to select the period that you want so if you're a long-term trader using um, daily sort of time periods you can set it to daily if you're a faster shorter term horizon trader set them to five minutes but what I do know is that the Renko charts work especially well in all time frames so let's look at some examples using our trading view charts and we're going to focus in on crude oil wt crude oil for these examples on the right hand side we have a one day chart of or one day uh, closing block period for renko and on the left hand side as this, you can see highlight is a one hour chart and over the same time period using the same block sizes we can see the granularity difference in the charts the daily ch chart there has a lot of less bricks and maybe you could call it a smoother longer term trend and less turning points whereas our one hour chart with the same one dollar block size moves around up and down a lot more frequently than its daily compatriot and that gives us either more ins and outs in terms of trade signals but it also creates more choppiness which can be tricky to um, master but as we can see here the trends looking very more consistent in the daily one for the long term and you can use the daily one to filter into the the lesser time period one hour chart and maybe trade in the direction of the longer term trend so here we've now got a one day chart on our crude oil and why are we looking at this well here we're looking at this because we want to see the effect of changing the size of the brick but within the same time frame so now the one on the right hand side we're going to change to a five dollar brick move and leave the one on the left to a one dollar brick move they're both one hour charts over the same time period but you can now see that the $5 hardly moves at all compared to the $1 brick move and again it's giving you a completely different picture of how to trade WT crude oil so is the five at $5 brick size sufficient for your trading would it give you enough signals you know 
does it give you enough action? That's what you've got to consider when trading. By changing the block sizes to the bigger five dollars, we can actually pull it back and look at a longer time period than maybe for a lot more longer term trading period. So very important to take away here is that you can see that using different time frames gives you different results. And we've assumed always that the brick size has remained constant in every period. And I think you're coming to see that that might not be appropriate for the asset you're trading. Um, it could be quite dangerous or detrimental to trade. I'll get you in too quickly or you know, not in at all and do no trading. Let's take a quick look at how a Renko 15 minute chart compared to a standard candlestick chart 15 minutes on the crude oil. And we can actually see the same time period how much clearer the Renko chart is on the left compared to the standard bar, uh, candlestick chart on the right with the $1 brick size. Notice the time periods as well completely um, different to what it's looking at because as we know the Renko chart doesn't look at time whereas the one on the right the candlestick does honing in very specific periods. So this is a very important point that you know it filters out the noise of the trading the Renko chart and actually probably elongates the time because sometimes it's just not necessary to trade when you're fixing in the brick size that you're using and actually highlights more the significance of turning points in the price. Okay, so some important things to remember here that you're going to get quite different looking um, chart behaviors compared to your know, more typical charts and remember that until the period closes say daily the bricks are only ever temporary so they can disappear if the price suddenly reverses against maybe an uptrend you know or you know a downtrend and then that can create complications and maybe some false signals for trading because you might get in and the block is temporary and then later in the day it disappears and actually you're in the wrong trade so we use other stuff to monitor that but we also need to be more accurate with our measurement of the brick size and somehow somehow entertain volatility of the asset that we're looking at into the equation so what is volatility It's the noise of any financial instrument it's the up and down the movement of price how erratic it is or how stable it is it's a measure of the variation of a price of whatever you're looking at i.e it's, it's level of uncertainty so here's two hypothetical charts uh, different instruments question which one would the trader most like to trade well I'll give you a moment to think well I'd go for A because it's more volatile so we're going to get some action the other one is just too smooth and you know that's going to create its own problems maybe we don't get any trading whatsoever unless we're an options trader who might like that sort of thing but the first one gives us some good action and traders like volatility especially predictable volatility so how do we measure that in technical analysis well you've got a couple of tools you can use the ATR the average true range or historical volatility um, which is maybe more a mathematical concept but you can apply that into your charts I mentioned previously that there were three traditional ways of setting your brick size the fixed value the average true range otherwise known as ATR and a simple percentage of price move of the asset that you are looking at now inside your chart package you're going to find variants of these methods some will have them some won't but in trading view that I use it's got fixed and ATR but I use a fixed block size based derivative of volatility to count in mind but we're going to look in now to the three main methods and before um, using any method we've got to consider the following variables uh, before coming up with a number you know have you got a long or short term trading view what sort of moves do you want to isolate in the price how sensitive do you want to get what have the past prices done and what drawdowns are you prepared to accept in your profits um, based on maybe a more aggressive Renko brick size but the important thing here is to be as consistent as you can so the fixed value approach may be the simplest 
approach of the lot comes down really to personal skill and objectivity in assessing an asset. It's completely discretionary and the user picks a random size that they think is appropriate to that market. Now is there any way you can systematize this? Hopefully you can but it's normally based on experience, knowledge of the market and how it works in its underlying methodology to create that brick size. And I use a fixed value but I come up with a systematic approach to do that and I'm going to show you how to do that later. So here's a brick that's fixed and we've got seven units on a one hour chart on the S&P 500 and simply that's what the the chart looks like. Now we can play around with the size of the fixed value and you can see in TradingView it's called traditional and that means the fixed size and we've got it set to seven we can see the ATR there as well as an option. We type in the number in the box size below and the moment it's seven and we get quite a lot of blocks on our page but say we want 10 you can see it slightly changes the picture of how many blocks we have obviously less blocks because it means a bigger move to create a block then if we go even bigger again maybe up to 30 dollars move per block you can see again we've got a completely different picture and going back a lot further in time on that same chart setup so it's going to take a lot more of a price move to create you a new block so therefore less trades so using average true range in Renko let's take a look at that now first of all we've got to know what ATR means and it's a basic proxy for the measure of volatility and accounts for the volatility of the asset and as like I said that's what we're trying to look for so that's why I prefer looking at ATR and it's based on the high low and close of a true range of any given asset over a period of time and 14 days is a very traditional default in technical analysis and it's a really good tool for measuring breakouts and helping on your risk management for stop losses so here's our 30 block one hour S&P 500 index again but this time we're going to change it to the ATR method on trading view charts so we go back to that box again and we just flip the button to ATR and what length as I said traditionally 14 is used but I'm going to stick in 10 here so it's going to look back through 10 bars of data to work out a size for a block and here we can see what blocks it's produced but more importantly up in the top left we can see the block size it's come out with is 11.7 dollars per block move and that's based on that period of ATR so some further thoughts on there it's well I suppose it's good for a more automated approach or maybe more systematic approach and the period of ATR that you use is going to affect the size of the block so what happened more recently you had a short period it could be more volatile it could be flat and then you could potentially get the wrong size box so you've got to have a consistent approach which looks at volatility over the longer term before sticking in a number uh, to your charts also play around with the ATR and divide by two for whatever you like to come up with your own box size as long as you apply it consistently but I want to show you how I come out with the ATR number for my trading and first of all I like to look at a traditional bar chart or candlestick chart uh, of the instrument I want to trade so here we've got the S&P 500 again on the right the candlestick chart on the left the Renko chart one day period for both and you can see the ATR is set to 10 in there and it's giving us a $38.4 brick size now that might not be right it might be too slow for you and you want to actually come up with something that may be more relevant to the longer term history of the S&P 500 or something that gives you more trading activity because you don't think that the last you know 10 periods is correct so what we need to do is go back to our candlestick chart and see how that's been performing to pull off the ATR of the candlestick chart. So we add the ATR indicator onto our candlestick chart and that then produces a number. So that's telling us that every day that the S&P on average is going to move in a certain number. And at the moment that's around 
40, 50 dollars. So we can expect on any given day the ATR of the S&P, the movement of the S&P to be 50 dollars. But we want to smooth that out. So I'm going to in a minute add a moving average on top of that. But you can see it's set to 14 days, which is a standard default. I leave it at that because I'm comfortable with that being a, the default of the market. So let's stick on our moving average now. And I'm going to have a longer term moving average, probably about 50 um, days worth to try and smooth out the actual number of the ATR because you know in 50 days you have ups and downs and sideways and that so it gives you a good picture of what's going on so an example of the process so we take that ATR number from the candlestick chart the 40 to 50 now we've got some options here you could be more aggressive and take the lower number less aggressive more conservative take the higher number that's your discretion but again do it consistently and we need to then take whatever number we choose and plug that into our left hand Renko chart where at the moment it's defaulted to an ATR of 10 of 38.4 but we're going to do something slightly different and flick it back to the fixed method but plugging the average true range number that we have used so in this instance I've used fifty dollars for the block size and note again that it's traditional and that's I think a more reflective value for the brick size which actually was a bit more than what the ATR of um, 10 that we had set up to run automatically gave us so let's move on to percentage of move for blocks oh, this really is a simple it's like simple as the fixed price you like trade crude oil $40 you think it moves 1% and that's enough for you and you put in work out 1% of the price to put into your Renko chart so maybe 40 cents is your brick size it's as simple as that again very subjective not something I use and don't often see in practice how do I do it it's a bit of a blend of the fixed and the ATR approach but firstly I like to look at what the general markets that I'm trading are moving in terms of volatility in the ranges whether anything is acting abnormally or outside of the standard range and I use this as a ballpark guide to when I'm looking at setting my brick size for the Renko charts but firstly I'm going to need to know the individual volatility of the asset that I am going to be trading so we've got to remember to make it as systematic a approach as possible and as consistent as possible and I'm going to use ATR as its fundamental um, starting point so let's take a look at the actual method that I use so for a daily time period Renko block size this is what I do so I go to the standard you know candle bar chart first and add the ATR indicator on I leave it to 14 um, periods and I want to obviously uh, get smooth that out so I take the 50 period I then read off the ATR number but the really crucial point that I've highlighted here is that I then take 20 to 30 percent of this number to create the block size this gives me the action I want but not too much that it chops me out and for what do I do for one hour 50 minutes, different time periods exactly the same process I just changed the candlestick bar chart to that time period and then take the 20 to 30 percent for the Renko block size exactly the same process just different time frame so here's some examples in the S&P 500 we've got a daily chart that's got a 50 block size at the moment what do we do we then go and change that using our 20 30 percent rule depending on how aggressive we want to be and we've changed it to 15 and that's given us I think a more optimal block size compared to just using a standard ATR approach so it's almost like an ATR divided by five 
Now we understand the building blocks of Renko, we actually want to put it to some use and put it into action. So how do we use the Renko in the world of trading? Well, you can use it by itself. We could use it to filter out trading noise. We could use it as a risk management tool of spotting support and resistance or maybe supplementing your candlestick or bar chart type as maybe a trend filter as, like I say, a supporting tool. You can use Renko charts just like traditional uh, bar charts, candle charts for drawing trends and here we can see that there's trend line breaks that you can draw on, there's support and resistance levels that make it really obvious what's going on in you know the market that you're looking at, in this instance the crude WTI market. So the old rule book said about trading rules can go long when the direction of the trend changes and the brick changes colour and go short when the direction of the trend changes and the brick changes to the other colour so let's take a look so here's our S&P 500, when it goes from black to red we sell and then when it goes from red to black after the downtrend move we buy and then we keep going through that and that's the old way of following the Renko rules and I can tell you that's quite a dangerous way to trade. You may get lucky for a bit um, but you're more than likely not. But another important point is these are the temporary blocks that we talked about. See they're in blue here. Well they're only going to turn black when the day closes. So in the meantime they could go even further up or they could come down and disappear. So this is why I'm talking about getting false signals on intraday price moves. So you could get around that by lowering the time frame or just be patient to the end of the close. But you've got to be aware that they are temporary blocks until the day finishes. So using the basic rules is unreliable and dangerous and it's a serious warning to take note of. We need to build other factors into it to take away that danger level and make it a more consistent approach. So as we can see there are some problems by just using the basic Renko chart in your trading. Your first problem is the old rules as we just mentioned. It's going to get you in trouble. You're going to get too many false signals which kill you especially if the market's trading sideways. The block size is a discretionary approach, so you can fall into trouble back the trap of backfitting, you know, making block sizes work for you, but actually don't work in the longer run. You need a ro more robust, consistent approach. And with time frames now added to Renko charts, you'll get a lot of temporary blocks that may disappear inside the time frame window that you're looking at and create false signals and catch you out. So what can you expect from your raw charts? Well, in its basic form, it's a very clear, simple concept, but you've got to really understand how the chart is constructed and made before you go live with your trading. Remember those block sizes, you know, the volatility of the instrument. The temporary blocks can catch you out and make it a mess. We need to enhance our process to put the odds more on our side and our, increase our probability of success. And that's where we're going to move to in the next part of this course. So let's summarise section three. So you've learnt here what Renko charts are, why they're useful to you, how to construct a basic chart, and you've come to appreciate the difficulties in defining the block size and trying to formulate a systematic process. You've seen some weaknesses of the Renko chart, but you now can practically construct your own Renko chart, but you're noticed hopefully by now that the standalone methodology is a bit too tricky to run so we need to enhance our Renko charts further. This really is a crucial section of how we take Renko charts to the next level. Um, we've got the basics under our belt but we now need, like I said previously, to up it a notch to make it a much better system so we're going to look how to add western technical analysis tools and indicators to our Renko charts we're going to learn how to build the rules needed to trade these enhanced charts and we're also going to see how we can apply risk and trade management processes to our charts and trading the big takeaway from globalization and the technology revolution is that it's now created technical analysis software that is very powerful and allows us to merge 
all different types of approaches and styles and tools all together to create a more robust, reliable, hopefully more successful trading system and for us using the Renko charts a lot more powerful trading approach. So if we're going to look at a quick example of how we could add some really straightforward indicators or tools on top of the basic Renko chart. So we've got Amazon here and it's a one hour chart with a five dollar block move and we've got a moving average added on top of the actual blocks and then below that we have something called the awesome oscillator which gives us a trend you know in out type approach where we look at that more later and as if we zoom in to get a bit more detail we can see that actually where it goes from green to red on the awesome oscillator we get a sell signal and that also marries in with our moving average there's the red brick you know has changed we're not quite sure whether it's time to go in but as it breaks through that moving average then we've got more certainty that we want to join and tie that in with the awesome oscillator at the same time we've got a more powerful trading system how do we get out well maybe we use a switch back through the the moving average so the best indicators to use there's no right answer and it's down to your style objectives time frames markets but whatever I use I try and use it as generically that it can apply across different types of markets whether stocks indices FX because then it's going to create more opportunities and more consistent opportunities but there's thousands of indicators out there you can use but I've found the ones that work best for me you might find something different so trial and error is part of the process and learning curve so I'm going to go through the ones I think I, I like the best and that you could start with and we'll take it from there but first of all a very important rule in technical analysis called collinearity now you've got to obey this and a lot of people don't which we're putting indicators together based off the same inputs so for example RSI MACD rate of change all based off the closing price bad combination because it's going to give you the same answer but it's going to fool you into the same answer whereas you want to put stuff together that's a mixture of maybe volatility or price or volume like Bollinger Bands RSI and not on balance volume because they're coming from different sources and giving you different answers and that together if they're all saying the same thing then that's giving you a strong supporting evidence that on top of your Renko chart moving from red to black or black to red it's putting like it says their probability more on your side that you're right now this table here gives you a starter for what indicators to put together I've got a trend column momentum volume volatility sentiment so you could start with maybe just one from each you don't have to have them from every column you know you might just have trend and volume volatility and momentum it's up to you but try and mix and match the different columns Talking about the volume column there, I want just to highlight an important uh, concept that there is no volume in FX, right? If you see on your charts it's wrong, if people tell you there is, it's wrong. It's an interbank market, that means it's not published, there's no data available, so don't be fooled when you see that if you're using a volume indicator on FX. So we're going to look at six indicators over the next part of the course, looking at trend lines, moving averages, the DMI directional moving indicator, relative strength indicator, Bollinger Bands and Awesome Oscillator all to give us different angles and enhancements onto our Renko charts. We're now going to look at some of those tools and indicators I said we were going to address and in this instance it's trends. You may know all this stuff already but it's you know, no harm going over it. So what's a trend, general direction of a market or of the price of an asset? How do we I'll measure that well it's going to go up down and sideways sideways being trendless and it's going to have three major time classifications six months to one year three weeks to six months and less than three weeks maybe better for timing purposes so here's our chart that shows us through the three different periods in action we got a longer term blue line the longer term trend we've got green line showing a medium term trend and then under that we've got our 
red short term trend so you can trade all those at the same time you might just want to trade the short term one so by determining the direction of the trend you're going to come up with three trading decisions either to go long go short or do absolutely nothing and stay on the sidelines And remember, importantly, that the market trends are roughly only a third of the time, so you need to know when it is happening. That's very important for what tools you're going to use. So here's a quick example on the S&P 500 on a Heiken Ashi chart, daily chart, green arrows, short-term trends, red medium, black dotted line there, the longer-term trend. It's just showing you how it works on a typical market. And really the rules of trend drawing are important to know if you have two touches on a trend line that's only a tentative trend you need three or more for confirmation of that trend and that's very important to know and to apply and it can be drawn on any charts even the japanese renko charts that we saw earlier and you've got to draw the trend line through the lows in an uptrend and through the highs in a downtrend and it's a very discretionary a subjective trading drawing process so here's a gold chart that I actually used in Bloomberg terminal while I was trading away just giving you a simple example of a trend line that's touched multiple times by five or six before it breaks so the more touches the stronger the likelihood of that move outwards in a way and as it did in that instance it went flying high upwards here's another one Diageo PLC UK company and again this is subjective you might see trend lines in there that I don't and that's what makes it more subjective less objective approach but also very useful to your trading to understand so what applications can we use the trend line for well we can use it for price objectives um, when the trend is changing um, the strength of the trend 45 degrees is a very important number that's the ultimate optimal trend line we can use channels to bounce prices between and we can also do it for entering you know long short positions and profit loss taking and we can see here on the hang saying typical channel example of the trend how the price has moved up and down in a range popped out briefly and then went back into that range so it's a very useful tool uh, trend lines so here's an exercise for you um, this is a typical blank chart find one for yourself and then just practice to your heart's content drawing as many trend lines as you can to work short medium long term What a lot of people forget is that you can actually use the standard uh, approach to trend line and pattern analysis on your Renko charts. You use exactly the same rules and you can open up a new nest of possibilities with your trading um, around risk and trade management and creation of um, new possible strategies so it's very important to take into consideration this sort of analysis you know we can easily find um, continuation and reversal patterns for example your standard you know double tops double bottoms heads and shoulders trend line breaks you know all of that lot you can use and I suppose an important point is that it's unlikely also not necessary that um, you combine these patterns in with volume because that's not what we do with uh, Renko charts unlike say candlesticks or bar charts but like I said these patterns highly effective so let's take a quick look at some of them and look at some examples so let's take our previous look at trend line analysis and how you can apply that to charts bit more specifically into the world of Renko and here we're going to use just a really simple example just to drive home the concepts of what you can do with a Renko chart and here we've got gold it's on a daily setup it's a ten dollar um, block Renko and nothing else added on it's clean and what we're going to do is we're just going to go through some of the uh, trend line and pattern 
creation that is traditional and technical analysis and show how you can use it on top of your Renko charts. So firstly let's go to trend lines. We're going to use the tools to the left of our trading view chart and we've got a trend line and it's exactly the same as ordinary um, candlestick or bar chart rules. It's the three touches for a confirmed trend, two for a tentative trend. So here we have an arbitrary line I've drawn on. Remember trend line drawing is very subjective uh, process. My lines could be completely different to your trend lines. And here we got one touch, two touch, three as it breaks. There we go. Maybe we could create a trend line break strategy from this sort of analysis. Remember these are moving in 45 degrees so it's optimal trend line movement as well there. So let's just draw a few more on. Um, you can have flatter ones like so and a breakdown. Um, again to the upside as well when you're drawing a down trends above the blocks you know and as it breaks up you enter. So there's simple trend line analysis on the Renko charts. Taking that a bit further we might want to use channel trend line analysis. So again we go up to our tools, we find the parallel channel button and you know you can draw on wherever you see fit. So there's our previous trend line example we use and we draw up and you might be looking for the bounces within the channels to trade or the breakout within it. You can do them all of different lengths. Let's put another one on. We might go for a really long one here and see what sort of price action we got. You know, some different markets might work very nicely between these channels and Renko and these act as brilliant turning points for when you want to get in or out of you know this sort of analysis. So that's parallel channels. And if you want to get a bit more scientific, you can even look at regression of the trend. So use the regression trend tool, maybe draw a long term line. You know, trend up there, and it's going to then overlay the future play out. You can change the settings a bit more. Um, so this one set to big standard deviation moves, but you can change those deviate standard deviations to suit your strategy, um, and it's going to give you a you know potential. You know, new channel target to play with in your trading and see how it bounces again a bit like the parallel channel but I say using regression to come up with those numbers so another idea for you my favorite use for uh, Renko charts when it comes to drawing lines and trend lines onto the charts are more to do with support and resistance and as you can see here We've got three blocks that didn't want to go below this sort of zone here. So to me that's very good support before the price based and then moved upwards. So I think the Renko chart really really does show you the key support and resistance levels. So factor that into your trading. We've got another one here, four blocks and bang it goes down. So from here we could use as you would in ordinary charting double tops, treble tops, double bottoms, treble bottoms, that type of pattern approach, even heads and shoulders types of patterns you could use but again for risk and trade management we on our example here you know if we know the price isn't going to go there we could put our stop maybe just under there to let that trade you know, go off to the stars. So another way of using Renko on the trade and risk management side and finding those key support and resistance levels. And like I said, you know, you can apply exactly the same chart pattern approach that you would on a bar chart or a candlestick chart to the um, Renko world. And 
we might have an, you know, an example of here is our sort of box of price action. You know, the support and resistance being sort of banging around in that zone. And then we can create flags and pennants and, you know, all sorts of shapes like we would in the world of, like I say, ordinary chart type. And we can use that as an example of where we might want the price, you know, to head off to, you know, with that first move there with the flag and pennant rule. You might be expecting that to eventually go up there. You know, and the price action has gone sideways for a moment, so maybe that discounts it, or maybe it's actually a bigger pattern than what we first thought, more consolidation in the price of gold there. But I'm just doing that really to show you how you can draw on analysis and try and get you started in thinking around how you can use these um, Renko charts to your advantage. And remember the round number situation and the, in technical analysis, key levels, psychological key levels, these blocks can sometimes just highlight those a lot quicker than looking at a, a standard type of chart. So there you go. There's some ideas to take away with you and apply to your charts. And we're just going to look at another recent example before concluding this section. So what have we got here? We've got the FTSE 100 and it's very recent to September 2020 and also October 2020. And I've thrown on a whole load of indicators. They're irrelevant for this analysis, but it just gives you a picture of how you can build you know, the tools up. But as you can see, around the 5800 area, we've got four blocks, or well, three blocks at the moment, with a fourth looking like it's going to come up. And this historically has been an area of support where the price has bounced up from but at the moment my indicators are telling me it's all still going south and we're going to use that 5 800 area as a very key you know support and resistance zone line if it breaks down is it going to go a lot further or is the trade you know is it going to hit that the price that line trend line and then bounce back up either way we can then use it for support and resistance uh, zones where to place our stop loss we can use it as targets you know we can use it as strategy creation or to confirm already the strategy that we have in place so that's a very quick simple example of using Renko blocks to aid indicators aid your strategy help you with stop loss and trade and risk management So a moving average is a great, effective, simple tool to apply onto your charts. Basically, it's, and you might have seen this in other walks of life or in your maths classes of old, it is a smoothing of a time series of data. It's easy to build and test. It's also easy to get into mess with and it's a very subjective process, but you've got to use it as a guide to the trend more than as a trading signal, but you could use it, say, for it exits, entries in combination with other tools um, but as we said it's a smoothing of a time series and gives us that insight into what the trend actually is and takes out the noise and there's different ways of calculating exponential linear weighted some people use one some people use a combination and use crossovers of those to create signals well that can be dangerous as I'll explain shortly and on top of that there's other popular methods you know, there's like the triple crossover, 4, 9, 18 period. There's a one based around envelopes, a percentage of price move. Uh, there's the donkey and bands are based off of a four week look back period. We have our Bollinger bands that use an input of a moving average to help set up, analyze the de standard deviation move of the price. We've got Moving averages tied to cycles, 5 day, 20 day, that can measure behavior um, easily. And you've got indicators on top of the oscillators like MACD that use the moving average. And in certain markets, you know, these rules can't be beaten. And, you know, if the price is greater than, say, the Renko blocks and it's bullish and vice versa. But 
there is a problem. They only work when the market is trending and this is what catches people out time and time again. And we need a tool that can be used to tell us whether it's trending or not. And in my world, I use the DMI. So let's have a look at an example. We've got Amazon, a normal candlestick chart, one week. So there's a long period of time there to have a look at. But we've got this set up as a high Kanashi chart to just smooth out the data from a standard candlestick chart and we can add the moving averages and change them around in this section here you can see we've got 50 209 20 100 all set up and we can unhide them hide them we've got the short term nine period here we can see how that interacts in and out the price as we move out in time periods we've got a longer term indicator and as they cross through the price we can actually then see yeah you, know, you know whether it's a buy or sell opportunity or it's trending or it's not trending so above is you know the price is up and vice versa so we might want a longer term look at the things what's going on amazon and we've applied a 250 moving average here and you know the price is definitely above both toward in july so i'd be more bullish and then we could use, maybe use the nine moving average to time our way in and out of a potential trade And here's just some examples adding on further indicate uh, moving average time length indicators to mix up, you know, and as you can see, you can create various strategies around this. So these moving averages paint a picture of a trading cycle. Um, and you may have heard of the turtles. They use a four week monthly cycle to create a donkey in strategy and they made a fortune out of trading that. So some final notes on the moving averages. Pros really helpful in finding the trend direction. It helps you let profits run and you cut your losses. Good for support and resistance, entries and exit. And really strong for trade management as we will see. Cons doesn't always work in non-trending markets that well. And people often optimise it and get in trouble because of that. Remember that I said that moving averages don't work all the time. We need to know when a market is trending or ranging. Now, this is what we're going to look at now. And remember that markets trend only one third of the time. That means there's two thirds of the time when they're not. And we need a tool that allows us to filter whether it is or isn't. And then on top of that, certain indicators work better in certain time frames. So you can do this very many sort of different ways and you can look you know, just by an eyeball test mathematically some rule based approach around moving averages and there's even indicators like parabolic SAR that I've used but the best one in my opinion to use is the directional moving indicator and it's developed by J Wells Wilder, Wilder in the 70s and he just wanted to work out some more mathematical systematic way of being able to measure that such a thing and it's made up of three parts the plus di which is the upward trend movement the minus di the downward and the average directional movement which gives you the trend range and it's normally set to 14 periods and the basic rules behind it when the di crosses the plus di crosses the minus di it's put long um, position to be taken and vice versa minus through the di plus di and greater than 25 adx it's trending unless it's ranging And if you're long, the reverse point is the low made on the day of crossing. If you're short, the reverse point is the high made on the day of the crossing. And the ADX is the is greater than minus DI or plus DI indicating a turning point. And when ADX is less than both DI lines, stop trading, get out. Um, I want to show you on gold, though, what that looks like and then how I develop the DMI further to be more effective for trading in Renko. So we've got a high Kanashi chart, one day gold. We're going to search our trading view charts for the directional movement indicator. We've put it on. We see our pink line there, which is set to 14. That's the ADX line. We're just going to make it a bit more visible for you.
There we go. So we've got our DI plus line, the bullish line, the blue one, the bearish one, the orange line, the DI minus, and our ADX trend filter. That you can see at the moment is pretty high around you know above 40 meaning we're in a strong trending market but we can also see that the crossing at the moment the two in lines which could signify a trend change and here we have an example of such a happening where it started to turn more bullish I like to use it without the ADX though as a simple crossover tool so when the blue is above the orange it's bullish and when the orange is above the blue it's bearish and you can see what happens when they cross they then create a more powerful trend change indicator so let's apply that back to our Renko chart here's the gold chart and same process we can see when the blue the DI plus is above the DI minus orange it's a buy and vice versa, you can see there a nice downtrend caught by the change. So it's a good trend filtering tool in terms of direction. If you want to use the ADX to gain the strength, use those rules. But in Renko, I find that this crossover approach is very good for discerning what sort of process the market is in. We're going to take a look at band based indicators, and these are bands around a you know a price range around the original price either above or below they overlay the price on the chart they could be based on percentage statistical measures volatility and they'll move with the flow of the price and we're going to look more particularly into Bollinger Bands and these are bands that are placed around a moving average at default two standard deviations away and what does this allow us to see well it allows us to see 95% of the price action and as a general rule prices are thought to be overbought when it hits the top of that band and oversold when it touches the downside although as we'll see that's not necessarily the case in all instances but they're a great tool for um, targeting you know maybe as a strategy those band levels So here's an example with gold again, a Heikinashi chart. So we're now going to add on the Bollinger Bands. And we're also going to add, add on on top of that Bollinger Band Width Indicator. There we go, both are on there. We've got the upper band, lower band, and what we call a basis line, which is that middle moving average period. That's normally set to 20 as default, and the two bands to plus minus two standard deviations. And the bandwidth there tells us how fat or thin the bands are actually going, which can give us a pinch point in price action. Normally can explode out after a narrow ranging bandwidth, as we can see in the example there. So you can play around with the inputs into the Bollinger Bands if you want to create a more specific strategy. And we do that by simply going to the settings and the inputs. You know, you might want to up the standard deviations that you're looking at. You might want to expand the length of the moving average and then all of a sudden you've got a completely different look to your Bollinger Band chart you've got a pinch point there but like I said it's up to you the variables you use but try not to backfit um, the inputs so we can see how the price bounces around in our new range and how the bandwidth expands and contracts as another measure at all and here's a typical example of in a longer term how that pinches and then breaks up to a more bullish move but we don't actually know from the Bollinger Band which way it's going to go we just know that it is going to move and that's why we'd have to use other indicators along with it to confirm the actual move of the price so 
So to summarise the Bollinger Bands, that you know they're very good at creating support and resistance levels, and you can use maybe the moving average in the middle as a trailing stop level. Um, they're much better at determining the beginning of a trend and not trading between them. And when the bands tighten, that can often signify you know an explosion in the movement of the price, although we don't know which direction. And a little tip there then: if you adjust the moving average, then it's a good idea to adjust the standard deviations for example a 50 moving average you might want to make the standard standard deviations a bit bigger 2.5 you know a 10 moving average take it down to 1.5 standard deviations the relative strength indicator is another of wells wilder's inventions in the world of technical analysis and his basic thinking behind it was that in an uptrend closes tend to be higher and in a downtrend closes tend to be lower and please note that it only uses the closing price in its calculation but it does smooth out the erratic and sharp changes in price so it's sort of like a volatility calculator based off a closing price and 14 days is the normal default input if you want to speed things up take it lower if you want to slow things down move it higher it is expressed as a number between 0 and 100 so anything over 70 is viewed as overbought and anything less than 30 as oversold so what is it useful for well identifying support and resistance levels giving us overbought and oversold levels um, as a you know strategy system in itself um, trend line breaks but I like to ignore the 70 30 line that we talked about and just create a middle 50 line and as it goes up through it I call a buy and a down below it a sell so here's gold again our example from earlier we add on the RSI uh, from our tri trading view charts there it is we're going to format that quickly because they're not my sort of colors there we are we put on the 70 and 30 bands see how that works we've got the 70 on the top and 30 on the below and normally when it breaks above and comes back down bearish and vice versa for the bullish time but it didn't actually happen many times over that period for gold so I want to give given you a very few signals to trade so that is why I like to look at just the 50 and I adjust that by going into the settings again So here it is with the 50 line placed on and we're going to get a lot more opportunities to buy and sell as it crosses up and down below. I've also added on here a moving average, same principle as the 50 line but it's just a bit more proactive in finding us trading signals but used exactly the same way as the price goes down to sell and vice versa and we can add on a trend line if we wanted to on top of the RSI and again same thing as the trend breaks we might want to buy you know you know the price goes up through the upside it might be a buy and vice versa we can use the RSI as a very strong trading tool and it works very nicely on the Renko charts as we will see later now I'm just throwing this one in here the awesome oscillator created by Bill Williams just an indicator to measure market momentum based off of a closing price and variables very similar to the MACD here's its calculation if you're interested when we're using it in, in you know, normal circumstances we don't really need to know um, what's it supposed to do well it's going to tell us really when to where well, it's going to just give us a buy and a sell signal um, and it normally pictured in a histogram version but I like to ch change that to a line view as we will see but it is great for creating signals as you'll see so here's our gold friend again and we're going to add on the awesome oscillator we find it in our drop down there it is as you can see initially it comes in as a histogram view and I want to change that because I'd find that a little more complicated to translate into buy and sell signals and you'll see any second what that will look like to switch it to a line chart make it a bit more visible for us and then what we will do we'll zoom in a bit to make it even easier to see 
and now we've just got green lines for bullish and red lines for bearish and you can see where the, the actual signals change here we got red to green and as you can see in the price above what a great signal that was and you can see green to red and it turned bearish and what a strong signal that was so she's a tool you know let's go through the chart pick out some other examples it's really quite a strong tool simple but strong so we're going to take a look at a really simple Renko strategy that we could create and we are going to use it on gold you can see our black and red bars we've got a DMI on there with the usual standard inputs we've taken away the ADX we've got a Bollinger Band on there And there's some important things to note here that I've actually used an offset function. I've turned that to five to create a breakout above and below those bands to make it more effective. That's a nice little trick there for you. There you go, you can see. Instead of bouncing between, you can actually get them to create a breakout process for you. You know, and you might you know get into that breakout, try through the Bollinger bands and out through exit through that moving average cross there same with the upside there you know long trade in on the bands and then out on the moving average the DMI there shows that most of the time that it was in a bullish environment so we'd maybe only be looking for long signals and there only bearish signals so then we start to marry it all up the DMI the Bollinger Band, the moving average and the Renko blocks to create a much more powerful trading system. People often overlook the effectiveness of uh, technical analysis for risk and trade management but it's even better when we start to use Renko and it can you know, really help us find out where to put a stop loss level you know, i.e. where we get out if the trade goes wrong. So what is a stop loss for those that don't know? Like I said, in simplified terms, it's you know, it's an automatic tool that takes you out of a trade at a place where you think your trade is completely wrong. It helps you create some objectivity and systematization to your trading, and it also will keep you in the game. The rule is, you know, always use a stop. That's one of the first things I was taught in trading. So let's look at a gold Renko chart as an example, a standard setup from a strategy we just created. We're thinking possibly that the price is going to go up. The DMI doesn't quite say that yet, but you know we're going to take a risk and we think we're going to go bullish. Where do we actually put our stop loss? Somewhere in that zone, but we're not quite sure where or how to do it. We need to systematize this approach to be as consistent as possible. This is just as important for your trading as actually getting in and out of the trade. So how, how can we actually do that? Well, I use various tools. Um, so the process for an initial stop loss could be something like this. But before we go on about the methodology, just remember that you have to be consistent with what you do. If you're not, you can't give the strategy you create the best chance of working and being able to measure it so we have to really be consistent I'm going to emphasize the word consistent in that approach write it down make it as you know easy to understand as getting in and out of a trade otherwise you're not going to get the results you know that you you want and you're going to get taken out of trades get frustrated annoyed and you know you lose your bank balance so I call the initial stop 1R, i.e. one unit of risk, and we're going to look at four methods and a combination of these as to how I go about setting an initial stop loss. 
So to add into the mix, we're going to use the average true range. We're going to use historical volatility. We're going to use Fibonacci. Uh, we could use pivots, but we're not in this instance. We're going to use Fibonacci. And we're going to use the Renko blocks themselves, and we're going to combine them all to create an effective system. So how do I do it? I start with one ATR times that by two or four to give me a number. I then put that in relation to some Fibonacci lines. I look where the blocks are for support and resistance zones, and then I have my number. So here we are on an example. Gold again, our strategy set up on the right, the candlestick chart with the ATR applied. With the smoother moving average, we can see that it ranges between 20 and 40 is the sort of number we want to take. So then that depends on how aggressive or conservative we would like to be. So a one ATR is going to take you down from the current block price of 20 to 40 dollars. And as we said, I then times that by two and four to see where that would then further take me. And actually we've had a very long run up in the gold price, so it's very difficult to know a place to put the stop loss here. So what we're gonna next do is place on Fibonacci lines to help us around our ATR approach. And it works exactly the same as ordinary uh, candlestick charts, the Fibonacci, and we're going to dig into Fibonacci in the next section so you know exactly how it works. But here's just for the example, I find the high to the low of that last trend. I drag them up to fit them in, and I've now got myself support and resistance lines for our potential trade. And we can see the sort of numbers we're, you know, maybe looking at contemplating. So now with the use of ATR and Fibonacci, we're going to hone in further and we're looking around sort of the 1870 area for an initial stop loss and we're going to need to zoom in a bit to see in a bit more detail where we can refine that further. But like I said, there's no blocks to the left or right there to help us out. You know, they're way down at like 1700 area so we're almost ignoring them from the process so now we're just reversing really to rank uh, the ATR and the Fibonacci approach because we're going to be a bit more aggressive this time so anywhere in that zone and we don't want to be above the line because we're going to long so 61.8 is the most important line on there so that's in the early 1800s up to maybe 1860 if we want to be a bit more aggressive, so let's call it 1850 for our stop loss level. And that's a simple way of how to work out how to set a stop loss. And through practice, that will become very easy for you to do. Some further thoughts, how aggressive you want to be is how tight you go, but keep to a consistent approach. And further on top of that, we've got to consider Renko for our general risk management rules. What do I mean by this? How the trade fits into the portfolio. So I suggest risking anywhere between 1 and 5% on any trade. So our 1R on a 10,000 pot becomes something like £100. We then factor that into the stop loss level to create our risk and return numbers. So that concludes section four. So what have we learned? Well, in this section, you've now learnt how to enhance your Renko charts by adding in Western indicators on top of the Japanese approach, which will hopefully you know, increase your probabilities of success. You've learnt how to construct these enhanced charts and some of the rules that you're gonna to need to follow. And you looked at the basics of building a strategy you've seen an example of a simple strategy and how to apply Renko to risk and trade management so welcome to section 5 we're nearly towards the end of the course and this is about putting all that we've learnt 
together so that we can then enhance our trading strategy process and we're going to look at creating uh, strategies and look at some examples and look at some setups that I've used and some tips for creating winning strategies around Renko and some other uses that you could maybe apply your Renko charts to in your trading and briefly we're going to touch on you know in the modern world of technology and automation how we can turn these possibly into algorithmic trading strategies so to kick off section 5 we're going to look at two different strategy examples and approaches the first a multi time frame strategy on the US dollar and the second a pure technical analysis approach on a US stock using different indicators So here we have our US dollar example on the left a four hour Renko chart used as our trend filter for the direction of the trades for the right hand side Renko chart which is set to one hour. So the left hand side chart has the DMI and that is set to the usual variables of 14 currently in a bearish environment. We also on top of the blocks have the moving average is an extra trend filter so we look anything below is bearish anything above is bullish and let's have a look at some examples there that we got bullish set up previously there perfect that would be a long signal and currently we're in a bearish environment at price below so that's bearish set so on the right hand chart we have the awesome oscillator we have the Bollinger Band set with an offset that's 10.15 and we have a moving average in there as well as an extra signal. We've got three different strategy components we could deploy. We've got the awesome oscillator on its own. We've got the moving average there with the price breaking up and down over its line to give us a signal. Or thirdly we could use the Bollinger Bands to give us a signal as and when it breaks out the price and the blocks of the bands. So there's three different approaches to start with. And this is how we could combine the lot. You know, if we look at the current situation of our US dollar, you know, it's bearish on the four hour chart, so we're only looking for bearish signals. And actually, we've got a bearish awesome oscillator, so now's a great time to go short on the US dollar. You know, we would be ignoring the bullish signals all between there because the chart on our left the DMI said don't and there as well so we are only looking for the short signals when the DMI tells us to and we ignore the long so there's one rule to put in place so let's switch to our stock example we're going to use Tesla for the purpose of that strategy so we've got on our left a one day chart Renko and on our right a one day chart candlestick with our average true range so we can find the block size and we're going to looking well it's more volatile Tesla for star but we're going to go a bit more conservative and take 30 and plug that in to the traditional IE fix setting so that then gives us our chart and what are we going to add as indicators on the stock chart? Well, we've got an RSI with a moving average that's going to give us a signal when to get in and out. We've got a longer term moving average as a trend direction tool. We've got our Bollinger Bands as with an offset to give us a breakout. And we've got the short term moving average for our risk management to get us in and out of the trade exactly, more specifically timing for exit. So at the moment, as you can see from this example, that we had the price of the blocks above the band, above the moving averages, the RSI told us to buy it and you can see plenty of opportunities to be long on Tesla over that period and we get out as the price blocks move back through the nine moving average. That's one way of playing it. We could also um, trail up stop using the moving average follow the price behind the blue slope the quicker moving average 
and that would also get you out at a similar period as to just following it um, blindly but we can also see there that down trades we only get in when it broke the longer term trend average yes it's a shorter trade and maybe not so much profit but a much safer way of doing it and we get out again as it breaks up through that nine moving average so to confirm the settings for your own use there I used the nine moving average ten Bollinger Band with two standard deviations and a five period offset and a longer term 50 moving average and the RSI I had 14 periods and a moving average of 9 on the chart and the ATR I was using a standard 14 with a moving average of 50. Getting the right exit rules to your trading place is just as important as anything else and there's many approaches you can take but we've got to make it systematic and consistent and you could use risk return, Fibonacci, number of blocks, indicators, trailing and moving average for example there are many approaches so let's have a look at some using our earlier Tesla example so we're just going to cover off some winning and losing exit approaches but the rule that you really must must remember and follow is that if you're wrong do what the chart says systematize your trading it will save you a lot of pain in the long run and make you more profitable in the long run we can look at a particular focus on the chart in this period where we got three RSI signals we got a potential area for our stop we've also got the blocks in those three periods showing us places where we could buy back into the trade but firstly we're going to look at risk return so there's this nice little tool there on the left hand side that you can use for long or short positions to give you an idea sort of moves you want so our first trade breakout when the variables were all met was here and to make that a one to one return I for one pound I invest I could potentially make or lose one pound then that's the sort of movement in the charts that we're looking for to get that return let's just move that along a bit as well the risk return tool and see what that would look like on those other potential trade entry points so you just drag and move so a nice little tool but really it's not much science in just applying one to one on every trade opportunity you get we need to put something more definitive over the top of this otherwise we'll be ever chasing um, the trade and I rarely see things actually hit one to one and you've got to be in and out according to the trade rules of your strategy rather than focusing just on risk and return so another approach you could take is counting blocks that's just saying well if the trend you know from your signal goes up eight blocks then I close out or ten blocks twenty blocks again you have to be consistent there but I rarely see this used it's a very difficult one to apply and like I say I probably wouldn't recommend going down that route one of my favorites to use is the Fibonacci and we can use that two ways one to find our stop loss and one to potentially get a trade exit point so for our stop loss we just use the retracement as we can see there on the left and the drop down we take that to where we got into the trade or the you know the highs and the lows around that period to draw our lines which you know in this example you know the high was just above there there's the low we drag that out we've got lines below that are going to give us a potential downside to where to put our stop so we got various levels there but also the top line is an extension which will tell us a potential upside target so it's two ways we've got a risk management for our stop loss and an exit for a profitable trade in there as well another solid approach is using a moving average you know you could say get in when it crosses through the line or like in this trade in the short term one as it cuts back through there you could possibly exit the trade and get out but if that's in your signals and 
your strategy you've got to stick with it and don't mess with the variables again we can see it here to the downside we've got a down trade but we get out as the price turns back up through that moving average so quite simple but another good method you can use with the moving average is just to trail the stop behind the moving average as you stay in the trade so if anything untoward happened to the trade you would get taken out at a maybe more advantageous point but in the end actually this trade works out the same as using the moving average and gets out through that that break so exercise for you practice the exit rule strategies and apply it to your Renko charts. So let's summarize some rules for creating and running a strategy and using the Renko blocks. So don't just rely on the blocks, always add indicators. Remember the rule of collinearity. Spend some time creating the optimal block size and remember don't backfit to make it work. And the process should work across assets and be as systematic as possible and be able to create risk and trade management rules and make all of that part of your strategy and did then decide on the indicators you want to use and try and see what works for you what meets your objectives and then put them into your strategy So once you've got the indicators you want to use into the strategy, you've then got to backtest those results, record results. You can either eyeball it or download the data to see if you've got an edge because there's no point running it if you haven't got an edge. If you can't backtest it, start from the assumption that you win, lose 50-50 and you've got a slight edge of 51% in your favour. Again, monitor the actual results as they come in if you can versus a back test to see if there's any slippage it might be the cost of trades around the spread um, some other variable like time of day you're trying to trade and ask yourself the who what where how and when questions when you're doing the um, strategy why should it work and if you're still unsure after all of that instead of using one eye one percent of your risk maybe on your portfolio half that take it to 0.5 r or if you can do 0.2 r then run that consistently until you've got a set of results that you can then scale up from now i promised that we'd look at fibonacci in a bit more detail so here we go so there's a lot to it but all you really need to know it's all about behavior and psychology and also about human and market interaction. It is in essence a self-fulfilling prophecy as to the reason why it works. And if you want to get back into the nitty gritty of Fibonacci, then you can do. Um, but you might have seen it when you throw a stone into a pond. The ripples are all Fibonacci. And... It has been used throughout time in all sorts of application, architecture, etc. But it does work however strange the concept is and it works in all time frames. And that's really because technology now has made it very easy to use this type of tool over your charts and everybody is doing it. The key numbers you need to take away from Fibonacci are 0 0.618, 0 0.382 and the zero and one lines that you use to find the high and lows and it is a great tool for finding support and resistance points that means it's very good for our risk management and trade management of our trades and is placed on top of the price chart and all you need to know is where the low and the high are and this is the problem of Fibonacci it's very discretionary but everyone's doing the same sort of thing and here you can see on the FTSE 100 here these arrows are around the points of Fibonacci lines and the price just keeps bouncing to and fro around these lines proving that the Fibonacci lines works and I could show you hundreds of charts like this they just work so all you need to do is find the obvious high and lows of the trend and then place the Fibonacci around these points and then that will draw the lines in between for you and as you can see on the FTSE 100 there it was a great tool to use to find support and resistance levels.
So how do we create the Fibonacci lines? Well, they're placed, as I said, on top of the price, and these lines are created automatically, but you've got to find the high and low. And I like to use a three different time period setup uh, to create a more accurate Fibonacci picture. Um, but like I said there at the bottom, all charting software should have this Fibonacci functionality now. It is very common used in all sorts of markets and types of trader. So let's see how that would work on an example on Renko. So we got the FTSE 100 stock index set up as a basic Renko chart. You might recognize the RSI underneath it there. So first of all, I start from what I call the long term perspective of the chart. Now we know we don't have time on Renko, but we do have time thanks to our, the way the charts work these days. So I can look back over roughly a year of time or you know maybe even shorter here on our chart here we got four or five months but you know we can scroll out you know scale in the chart to get a longer perspective because we want to know what's been going on over the longer term to find if there's any key significant support and resistance areas so as we go further and further out we're getting a bigger picture of what's happened to the FTSE 100 if we can just fit those highs in there we can actually then see obvious highs and lows in the chart so the long term i would start with the fibonacci tool and there's our high and there's our obvious low and then draw that out to create a set of fibonacci lines like so we're not quite worried about the results just yet but we could maybe see some key interesting numbers starting to show up then phase two is to get a more medium term picture and again this is where subjectivity comes into picking the highs and lows we're going to go for you know when i say medium term up to say six months so we look back you know, and if it's seven months, it's a matter. If it's five months, it's a matter. But we're going to find the high and lows in that period. They're obvious. There they are. We draw them on, and we're starting to see lines from the medium and long term interact with each other. And those interactions are creating even more obvious points of support and resistance for us. And then we get into the short term. You know, it might be a month, two months, and again find the highs and lows or obvious ones that are worth using and here we go we found them we apply the short term process and now it's starting to look like a bit of a mess from this longer term perspective but we've now got to try and zoom in the chart so we can use those lines for our current trade idea So now we've broken out the lines a bit better we're looking for areas that overlap and there are instantly straight away you can see in the you know, six five hundred area there's two lines that overlap so that's going to be quite important there might be a lot of resistance if the price got up there it's also very good for our stop loss you know we got our line here so if we were looking to go long in that trade we might want to put it just under there or just under that next line which is more longer term maybe a bit more safe and we can see actual the blocks there bouncing off there and again there so that could be quite a significant a resistance point to go just below with our stop loss so you can see how putting multi lines on top of the chart is quite an effective way of coming up with you know numbers for this risk management of your trade and again if you want to be more aggressive pull it into tighter Fibonacci lines but again look to the left look where the blocks are see if there's anything obvious and adjust accordingly so you know we're looking for an upside trade maybe here we can use them those Fibonacci lines for the upside so there where we've got two lines crossing I've probably put my money on it being a bit of a flyer to there and then it's going to stall before breaking up through so it's going to give you some psychology and discipline on when to get in and out of trades and just enhances the power of your 
strategy is just that little bit more. So with any trade, there's a process that you're going to carry out. It's going to start with your research, where you're going to find potential trades. You're going to produce a short list of those trades. You're going to work out the risk management, trade management, the portfolio sizing of them. You're going to set those. You're going to execute the trade. You're going to then manage the trade through to its exit. And it's either going to be profit or loss. You're going to record your results and not a lot of people do this and it's hugely important is you've got to record your results and analyze it to improve your performance in your trading and then you spin that cycle round and round again but the analysis of your results is often overlooked and shouldn't be because they give you vital clues as to where you're succeeding and failing and where you can tweak your work and trading and strategies to produce more optimal results. So some measures you could use to test whether you're doing well or not, or, you know, win loss ratio, sharp ratio, risk return of the trade, the holding period, whether you win more long or short trades, what your average wins your losses and what your biggest and average drawdown and how many trades you're doing. They're just some of the statistics you could use. There's thousands you could get into, but again, make it consistent, the process, analyze what you're doing, put that into your plan and follow it, put that into that trading process diagram we've just looked at and use it and use it effectively. There's no point analyzing it if you don't do anything with it. So here's some, there's some starters for you. Go away, build your plan, put them into it. So important uh, tip here always have a trading plan and treat it like you would running business you wouldn't start a business without working out the costs and all the variables involved whether it would be a success do the same for your trading so let's get into an example around cat jpy and fx pair and i've created a renko strategy here as a guide so here's the inputs so it's quite straightforward we're going to use an ATR approach with a um, look back period that we want to use. We use a Bollinger Band 1015. We're going to use three moving averages and a DMI set to the standard variables. We're going to replace that stochastic there with our RSI as we've been focusing more on that in the course. But you know, try it out by all means in some of the exercises and practice to see what difference that can make to your strategy. So first of all, we're going to need to flip our chart out of the previous example of FTSE 100 and turn that into the CAD JPY currency pair that we want to turn into a strategy. And with that um, block setting of the FTSE, that's what it looks like, completely wrong. So we need to first of all work out the block size. So we've got our ATR in there and we can see 0.658, roughly 0.65 is a more aggressive number to take into the chart and from there we take that up into the settings to change the block size we can just click on the chart the blocks change that to what we want to go remember that 20 30 percent rule as well so we're going to use 0 0.2 so that gives us our chart we've got now our indicators there that we now going to have to tidy up now I've used there the modified method of ATR when the setup it said to use a 30 so we can just play around with that just to see what the difference that will make. I'm actually going to use the modified method for this example but just to show you there we go we type in the 30 and actually it doesn't look quite right the chart for what we want to do and that's one of the eyeball tests of whether your strategy works or not. Does it look a nice clean trending up down type of block size that you've got so we're not going to use the 30 because it just doesn't feel right and we're going to flip that back to our methodology that we're going to use around the ATR variant of taking the 20 30 percent so back to the 0 0.2 and then what we're going to have to do is start to add on those other indicators
So we're first going to add the Bollinger Bat. Again, drop down indicators, add them in, find them. There's the Bollinger Band. Now we want to make them look pretty and change the variables. You can do this all at the same time as well, so you don't have to keep jumping in and out of your trading view charts. We're going to stick the moving average on. If we click that three times as well, we get three moving averages in there. We're going to add on the DMI and we're going to style that so it's easy to see. We're going to drop the ADX. Let's style the Bollinger Bands. We don't need the basis middle line because it's not relevant to our strategy. We're going to make the bands a bit wider so we can see them more clearly. And then we're going to have to go to the inputs. In a minute after we set our moving averages up. Remember we were going to use three of them in there. And like I said, just a double click will add two more and then we can then change those inputs to longer or short term, whatever we wanted according to the strategy. Make it different colour so it's more obvious. So you know, we change that to a 10 for example. That one to the 50 gives us a more medium term trend we don't want it the same color so we change that out let's go nice pink there we go we just tidied that up a bit so we're starting to form a strategy here we only want the one chart because we don't need we've done the ATR input so we don't need the other part now so now we're starting to get our strategy together and be able to actually use it. So in terms of trading signals, we've got a DMI that's showing bullish, we've got an RSI that's showing bearish, and if we zoom in on here, we've got sort of a mixture. It hasn't broken out of any bands for the Bollinger, and the, but it is above the moving averages in certain parts, so you could be more aggressive and enter, but it hasn't gone over the longer term moving average, so let's just change those Bollinger Band inputs, like we said earlier. So that we've seen the standard ones, but now we're going to give it the offset and make them more aggressive. And I did this deliberately later so you could see the impact of this Bollinger Band movement and how how strong it is in your trading. So now we can see that we've got a clear breakout. So we've got the moving averages and Bollinger Band giving us a buy signal at the moment. Well just about it was at that point but now we've got a cut back and maybe a pull out to get out of a, that long trade so at the moment the strategy is just saying sit on the sidelines we've got neutrality in too many signals to do anything with so you've got various options with these type of strategies you know use the ATR 30 as the Renko block feed and you can change it like we did in that example to show you how you could do that to the different approach you know, use the 50 moving average as the trend line, and then you've got these simple strategy rules that you can break down. You know, if the block size and the trend are greater than the moving average, it's long, and vice versa for a short. Use the stochastics or RSI and DMI to improve your timing on there, or method two, just use the Bollinger Band break. Go long when it goes above it, go short when it goes below it, the blocks and use the DMI to improve the timing or you know, the direction of the trend, long or short. Or three, enter on an indicator signal in line with the trend. You know, and the stop loss, we've talked about the methods previously, use them and sort of to finish off this section, I want to just show that even works on Bitcoin, a new asset. So we're gonna change the whole setup to Bitcoin from Canadian Yen. And there's lots of bitcoins to choose from. We're going to go with the one on bitmap. Obviously, there we've got the CAD JPY settings. That's wrong. So we need to find our ATR to put into the blocks because that's the approach we're going to take. And you can see the actual ATR is a lot bigger. We've got 340 to 
you know, 450 point move here in Bitcoin. So it's a lot more volatile than the currency we've just looked at. So we've got to decide which approach do we want to go. Maybe something in the middle, 400 there, but we don't plug in the 400. We take the the um, 20, 30% rule on top of that. So we go to the traditional and we type in, we're going to go for 100, so 20% of 400. And then, well, we've got our block size. We scroll it out to see a bit more what we can do. We will then want just the one page because now we've got it set up. We don't need the ATR inputs anymore. And now we start to have a, the same setup on a different asset with a different block size. And here's a typical trade example where it all lines up. Buy on the DMI, buy on the RSI, buy on the breakout of the Bollinger Bands. And here's a short, a small short trade and and uh, that you would have um, ignored because it goes against the DMI and then also the other short one. So you can see how effective the Renko system is of filtering out the um, false signals in your trading. So here's some other ideas you could use for your Renko charts. You could actually use them in support of other chart types. So maybe you don't want to use Renko charts as your main trading weapon that you want to use maybe a bar chart or a candlestick chart. So let's take a look at an example of how we could possibly do that. And we've got here the pound against the dollar again. One day chart. And on the right hand side, we've got the one hour candlestick chart with just an awesome oscillator, some Bollinger Bands, stuff you're familiar with, but that's going to be our main execution window. And on the left, we're going to use the DMI as our trend filter. So at the moment, as you can see, we've got a more, well, we've had a more bearish situation, but we've just had a turning point where it's turned bullish. So we would now be looking for bullish trades in that one hour window. So now knowing that we're going to be bullish, we want to use our awesome oscillator to get us into a trade. So we would be taking the signals where it goes from red to green. and We might be adding the moving average as a filter on top of the one hour chart for it. Or we might be using the Bollinger Bands in conjunction with the awesome oscillator but you could just use it on its own and they would have proved quite fruitful triggers the awesome oscillator just on its own so here's a you know a good way of combining Renko with ordinary charts as a different alternative idea I said that we would look at how you could use Renko in algorithms and automation of your trading and I hope you can see you could quite turn it into an easy systematic algorithmic process. So that means that you're going to need the programming skills to then you know turn it into what you like really, any time frame, any strategy. And the favoured platforms for coding at the moment, Python and C++, but I used Python and Ruby on Rails um, in my world. And actually I ran a strategy on Renko in 2017-18 using Ruby on Rails that turning a near 300% return on a very high sharp ratio and if you want to read more about that follow that link there and it'll tell you how I use Renko and built my own algorithmic trading strategy around that and also you'll probably find getting the data is the hardest or one of the hardest parts of the processes and there's various ways you can do that you can use people like QNL or Quantopian, or I do the broker approach where I use their API. And if I trade with them, that keeps the costs down. But all you're going to need from your data set is the open, high, low, and close. And then from there, use your programming skills to create the, the block sizes, the indicators, the strategy setup. Just a little aside here, if you want to go the algorithmic route and work for hedge funds, you're going to need your strategy to be probably in excess of a 3 plus sharp ratio. So remember that when you go for the job and you're going to need some proven track history as well. So let's move on from algorithmic strategies and look to summarize what we've learned so far in this section. 
Now before we end this section, I wanted to put together a sort of bullet point um, summary of the Renko points that I think are important so far. It's all important, but these are particularly important. I'm not going to um, bullet point scroll them into you so they stay on the screen so you can read them a bit more carefully. There's 15 that I've um, blocked off here. Like I say, it's not a um, complete list, but it will certainly help you considerably when you're putting together your trading strategies and approach, you know, the whole package. So please use them, please digest them, please um, consider them. You now they're important. I wouldn't put them up there for fun, so use them wisely inside your trading. So, uh, first point, remember Renko is about price action and not time action. It's easy to forget that. We're interested in the movement of the price and how quickly it gets there or how slowly it gets there. Sort of irrelevant to how Renko works. We can adjust as we know time frames, but um, really focusing on that thought. It's price action, not time action. Second, I hope you've learned that the old rules and just using the blocks as themselves, you know, going from you know long to short, short to long, is dangerous. It's going to get messy. It's going to give you unreliable, inconsistent results. So that brings us on to point three. You know, always enhance Renko charts and make more powerful by adding on the Western indicators and tools that you now know about. And when you're doing that, point four, don't forget the rule of collinearity, you know, not putting stuff together that is built off the same inputs. Find different variables, whether that's sentiment, volatility, whatever. We've got that table of different tools you can put together. Use that and remember collinearity when you're putting those indicators and tools together. And I hope you've seen that, you know, Renko charts are multi purpose and they can be used for all styles of types of trading you know from breakouts trend following swing reversal very good for creating strategies and giving you an edge and on top of that they're very good for creating a systematic trade and risk management process so a very good all-rounder and one that shouldn't be ignored from your trading point six always factor in volatility to the block size creation process you know the different methodologies and i've given you an approach that i use Factor that in because otherwise you're going to get whipsawed out of trades. You're going to get more losers. Um, it's going to be hard to use Renko successfully. So factor in the price movement, the volatility of each asset that you're looking at. And number six, create a systematic, consistent brick size methodology around this. And like I pointed out, beware of that temporary block. Uh, build that into your strategy rules. How are you going to use that when it comes because we know that the new block only signs off when it's gone through that time window so it's temporary until then so that could give you false entry signals bear that in mind very important and on that note so i suppose also about the time blocks don't forget you can use renko in different time frames to you know give you a different edge you know give you more or less trade action around a certain asset that you're looking at and we want to point nine there define any trade exit process and make that as systematic and consistent as possible and a golden rule there number 10 always always use a stop loss point 11 don't forget to use the western approach to trend line patterns fibonacci pivots for your support and resistance analysis on top of those Renko charts it's going to really um, enhance your trade and risk management um, processes and trade entry and exit um, processes and make those strategies stronger don't forget to build your Renko trade size approach into your overall portfolio methodology i.e. you know I'm going to risk 1% per trade of my trading pot that sort of rule base 
And then once you get into your strategy creation, do not backfit. If you backfit to try and get you an edge, it's going to probably fail in the long run. We want to find the edge, you know, ask those who, what, why, how, when type questions, you know, get it to work across different asset asset types. You know, strategy process is crucial. Define it, lay it out, and that's what point 14 is about. Have that trading plan, and whatever you do, you've got to give it a chance to work, and you've got to make it as systematic as possible because that takes out a lot of the psychology or the bad psychology of trading. It also makes the whole process more measurable. And if you don't give it the chance to work and don't apply it consistency consistently, it's never going to work and never never going to give you the results that you want. You won't be able to analyze it. You won't be able to work out what's broken, what's not. So really, really make a systematic and consistent process around these Renko charts. If you do that, you're going to give yourself the best chance to make a success of Renko. Now don't forget these aren't these last 15 points anything new it's all content that's been covered in the course I suggest that if you struggle with any of those 15 points go back find out the information and how that fits into your world of trading if you're still confused then don't forget you can always get in touch with me so let's move on now to section 6 and the general course roundup so let's summarize what we learned in section five. You've learned how to build your own Renko strategy and giving you a firm, firm platform to develop a more systematic trading process and that involves risk and trade management as well. You've seen some alternative ideas and uses for your Renko charts and also how you could possibly turn this whole process into an algorithmic trading you know, strategy business. Good successful trading is not just about taking a course, it is a journey and because of that you need longer term support and content resource available to you to progress you through that journey hopefully to a successful finishing line. Now at the Stop Hunter I've put together all of that sort of stuff on our website www stophunter.co.uk so in this uh, section we're just gonna have a quick look at the website to see what is available to you so welcome to the stop hunter website and the first thing you'll notice is we do cover off a lot of markets stocks and that's US global cryptocurrencies all sorts of markets there NFTs as well Forex commodities and stock market indices so we cover a pretty broad spectrum for you there now scrolling down the home page you'll notice eight blocks and they are the areas that we really cover in some depth now over on the right hand side we have fintech and consultancy service is so we you know, go out to professional traders institutions schools universities and come up with trading financial markets solutions teaching programs for them there so you can click on those uh, blocks if you would like to find out more now we have our e-learning offering and if you clicked on there it would take you through to the other courses that we provide at the stop hunter and quite excitingly the youtube channel is one that we've been working on quite a bit over the last six months and there's hundreds of videos and a lot of content there for you that will support your you know trading journey and your objectives in there so I recommend that you go and take a look at that then we've got four other blocks that really get you into the nitty-gritty of whatever markets you want to trade we've got Forex stocks and options uh, cryptos and NFTs and my um, bread and butter the technical analysis um, area 
So if you want to learn more about technical analysis, click on the link there and that will take you through to the relevant page. Once there, there's a lot to explore. And if we scroll down the page, we can find out what's available to you. There's simple questions and answers. Why learn technical analysis and those resources that I was talking to you about. There's free courses on YouTube. There's links to our e-learning, specifically the technical analysis courses and you know how to access the YouTube channel. And more specifically, I get this asked quite a lot you know what charting package should you use so done a bit of an overview there of the reasons and ideas for selecting a charting package and down the bottom there the charting package that I use in the courses in YouTube and in my own trading trading view with links through to find out more on that platform so if you want to learn more about the forex market and what resources we've got for you there then hit that blue block on the home page and then scroll down within that page and you'll find videos on your know, reasons to trade forex forex trading explained a trading a trade training course coming soon onto the youtube channel links again to the youtube uh, channel you know a video on how to find a good forex broker top 10 tips and then the brokers that we recommend to you to be trading forex now we've got trade nation that are cfd spread better we've got forex.com if you're a u.s citizen wanting to trade the forex markets then we've got city index and forex vox that are also cfds and sped brett providers so hit that yellowy gold block on the home page and it'll take you to the cryptos and nft section now i'm hoping we've got you covered here uh we've got you know loads of stuff on courses Traders Club, which we'll talk about in the minute, upcoming you know, content, and then the exchanges that I recommend and use myself. You can see you click on those and it will take you through to them if you want to discover more about those. And trading bots, I'm heavily into the trading bots world. I'm going to produce some courses on that as well soon. But you know, if you haven't got the programming skills and you want to get straight into automating your trading, then here's five possible recommendations for you to explore again click on the blocks and it will take you through to them and then to finish off we've also got some stuff on securing your cryptocurrencies hard wallets and we recommend the use of Trezor in here and there's some offers down there for you to follow as well so hopefully we got you pretty well sorted on the crypto nft space then hitting the light green block on the home page is going to take you through to stocks and options. And again, you know, we've got a lot of course and extra free content here, how to um, learn to trade options, uh, stock markets, you know, the ins and outs of how they work, traders club again, and the stocks that we cover, you know, there's a pretty good selection of countries there through the brokers that we use us uk european stocks swedish norwegian finnish swiss canadian south african i said plenty to choose from wherever you are in the world and if you want to trade us markets directly stocks and options then we use first trade and they have international accounts which can allow you to trade those markets from other places around the world then we've got a couple of spread bet CFD providers that give you access into other markets around the world trade nation and city index South African stocks US Scandinavian Swiss Canadian those ones I mentioned before now if you want to find out more about them click those visit links they're all ones that I personally use and recommend so that's the last of the sectors now i want to take you through to the traders club so a recent development at stop hunter is the traders club now we've run traders clubs before in different guises but this one is totally free to join on discord it's very easy to set up you just go onto the block click on the link and then follow through what discord tells you to do it's totally free like i said and it covers really everything analysis research you know exclusive content education offers competitions the whole lot ideas and you know i put some webinars and videos in there as well for you to follow and i suppose one of the big plus points is 
it's a community and there's like-minded traders you know all talking to one another share your thoughts opinions fears you know ideas you know all of that lot in this uh, club and I'm also on there pretty much all the time so I will pipe in every now and again do a bit of analysis content and you know I'm there to be asked questions so it's a very good free resource for you to sign up for so like I say just click on the link and follow it through and I hope to see you on there so we're also on all sorts of social media and you can click on the buttons there on the home page to join those um, different resources we've got LinkedIn we've got Twitter Instagram Facebook obviously YouTube and we've recently added TikTok as well and if you want to email me directly get in touch directly then use that email below there info at the stophunter.co.uk so I hope that little taster has given you an idea of the sort of support and resource we can offer you along your trading journey so hope you found that useful and I look forward to hearing from you and getting in touch congratulations you've completed the course well done you're now an expert in Renko so you can take that on into the world of trading and in summary you've now got a good grasp on the subject you can hopefully see how effective this sort of chart can be in giving you a trading edge and you've seen that it can work across all markets and all time frames you've learned a bit about the history of Renko um, what it is and where it has come from and how it fits in today's modern world of trading you understand now how to construct a Renko chart and the mass behind it and that actually it's not too much there it's not that complicated once you decipher how those blocks work you know how to enhance your Renko charts and put the odds more on your side that's by you know utilizing those extra methods and overlays that we've looked at you now know how to add in risk management rules to your trading strategy and most importantly I hope you understand that Renko creates discipline and consistency in your trading which is crucial for your trading success so when I've done courses in the past I found them quite exhausting to take in the information so what do you do next well I'd suggest next few days take some time off let it all sink in then in the next two weeks you've got to finalize your trading plan remember what I said treat it like a business develop it out like that then the next month if you haven't already get the brokers finalized fund your account sort your hardware out sort your software out and then really it's time to hit the ground running and start trading one month plus commit to your trading plan like I said keep track of your results check what's going on use the resources at the stop hunter and remember it's a trading journey taking it that bit further get the experience under your belt learn learn keep learning keep that passion for trading get a mentor because that always helps um, your professional trading development source out the right help use the right resources speak to like-minded people and, that, and also remember at the end of the day it's not a matter of life and death and you should enjoy it so good luck and happy trading and thank you once again for being on our course